There you go. What's up, boys and girls? It's the next day. I got Matthew here, obviously, because there he is. He's not a hologram. We went to Caterpillar. We got us a new pump. We took the old one out, turned it in for the core charge, got this one back. So this one's brand new, ready to rock and roll, already set up. Now, in the book, Caterpillar explains how to, like, set it up and tune it right. Um, we're not doing that. We're just getting it already done from Caterpillar, already good to go. Also, I went and got the primer valve. The last time Matt had to prime it for me, this little plastic piece broke. So, also this gasket could have failed. That could be where our air is going into it. So, instead of just a little piece here, there, we'll just replace everything that needs to be replaced. Also, a lot of you guys way back when have been saying the engine cranks too long before it fires up. This little elbow piece is not just an elbow. This, according to what I'm reading, basically is your fuel pressure regulator. The transfer pump sends fuel into the injector pump and what the injectors don't use goes back to the tank. But this is a flow restrictor. And what flow won't go through makes the pressure in the injector pump side before the actual injectors. I don't know what it is around here, but it's not just here, it's everywhere in the state. If you've seen any of my railroad videos, you see the bugs. We are literally invaded by mosquitoes. Like you literally gotta spray a ton of off just to work. And then we're inside. So it's bad. Anyway, we're working through it. So that's your fuel pressure regulator slash elbow. And of course, I had Kundingers make me a new piece of hose for that hose you saw me take off from the cab. This just puts my fat ass up and down in my air seat. So with that, now that I got help, let's go ahead and get started. The way this works is very similar to an old Chevy or Ford pump. Actually closer to a Chevy, except there's no push rod way it does is it just pushes this plunger up and down to make the pressure really simple stuff what i'm doing now is i'm taking these little protective covers out so i can start putting the fittings in and start angling them in the right directions sometimes these things could be the biggest pain in the neck to get out The way this works is you put the o-ring between the washer and the threads and then once you get it angled right you thread this down to squish the o-ring thus making your seal so we have our brand new caterpillar o-rings put that on and I thread this in Now I just gotta make sure I get the clock position proper. It sits in there like so, out and in. This is in towards the block, this is away from the block, so anywhere around that angle should do. Of course, I'm grabbing it in a vise where it's beefiest, in other words, where it actually has some bite to it, so I don't have to worry about cracking the casting. There we go. This one here, I didn't take the O-ring off. As you can see, it's real old and nasty. Actually, it's a little more pliable than I thought it would be. Either way, that's junk. I don't know why. My Caterpillar made the new ones red. Perfect. Now that threads. In here, Let's see if I got the right wrench. I sure did.
perfect. One last thing before we go under. This O-ring simply rests in here. You remember seeing all that oil come out when we took the old one down. All that does is keep the oil from falling out and leaking. Real simple, right? So as long as you don't lose this O-ring, we'll be good to go. So I'll get underneath and won't we'll stall it. <laughs> it's virtually impossible to reach it. Because all the crap, you got to reach around. Oh. I'll just wipe down the area where the pump mounts. It's smooth. It's not like shiny, shiny clean, but it's not going to matter. We're not painting it. Just want to make sure there's no burrs or issues or anything in there. There's like a cam lobe in there. I don't, you can see it. But there's like a cam lobe in there that operates to make that pump work. Yeah. I'm going to put the bolt through so that we don't lose it. Make damn sure the O-ring is there. You see it right there? We're good to go. Now if I could reach. See if I could do this one-handed. Well, obviously, I got to thread it in. By the way, boys and girls, this one pushes nice and easy. I should have showed that off camera. You see when you push up on it, you're pushing down on that button on your pump. But the other one didn't want to push at all. Not easily, anyway. It could be uh, somewhat determinative of what the actual trouble was. These are tiny bolts. I don't want to put too much crap on them. Plenty. I'll hook up this fuel line while we're here. Thread the adapter on and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook the fuel inlet hose to it hopefully without taking another bath this way the angle is still able to be adjusted it just rests right there nice and loosely so that's where I like it test the shock absorber nice. 
Okay. Nope, three quarters it is. Got it. Excellent. So I'll tighten the fuel line to the pump. Not on that other piece. Excellent. This should be done from up here. So, in review, this is from the tank. Actually, in review, this that it goes from the tank through the hotline to the first filter, then goes to this from here, from that filter down this line to the pump, from this pump here up to the second filter, from the second filter into the injector pump itself. All right, Matt, what I want you to do is go and take this primer pump off, this bolt and that bolt, and it just pops off. Okay. I'm gonna need that half for the top one. What, wrench? Uh, the ratchet, the socket I gave you. I didn't realize they were different. They are? Yes. One's larger than the other. The top one is larger. The bottom one is 7 16 the bottom, the bottom one is 7 16 the top is half. Okay, make sure you replace it the way it came out. Yep. Now, I have never taken that apart since I've owned Orwell. Can you get... If that's it, it should come out right. Yeah, just give it basically a little yeah, dribble, dribble of fuel. Is the gasket on it or the housing? No gasket. There's a gasket. No gasket. There's a gasket. Matthew? Oh. Okay. Oh, the gasket. Check that out. Size of the original Caterpillar part number. AF. That means something. Not Caterpillar AF. But AF actually means something. AF 1P436. That was on the gasket that we put on the... That was on the oil pan and... The AF the, means something. I yeah. can't remember what it means. That looks good. The whole engine really needs to be steam clean one of these days. Okay, take your, your gasket. Got a little oil. See, there's a difference in the size of the holes yeah so make sure you put the whole right hole on the right side and it put your put your new pump on now look and see there's a big hole and a little hole so make sure it goes in the right way which would be large that way okay Matthew just pointed out something to me. What looks to be obvious is not. And thankfully, Caterpillar thought ahead and made it impossible to put it on wrong. I directed Matthew the wrong way. Now let Matt explain. Because there's a difference in the pump and the bolt sizes in, in the two different ones, you cannot put it on backwards because the big bolt has a specific size hole in here and here plus the gasket too. So you can only put the gasket on one way and only put the pump itself on one way. So it cannot go on backwards. All right, we'll go ahead and install it now. I'll snug them. Mm -hmm. Or just you snug them and I'll tighten them. Alrighty, so now what we're going to do is change out that pressure regulator, for lack of a better term, which is this right here. It has extra plumbing to it, for lack of a better word, that I don't think we're going to need. 
Give me a 9 16 wrench there, Goobs. This is the return supply line to the tank. Eleven sixteenths, I believe, and a paper towel. I don't know who put this on. It looks a little fugazi, for lack of a better word. That's a lot of reducers. Five eighths? No. That comes off the same way. Loosen the nut and the whole thing threads off and then there's a o-ring in there This is the reducer right here But this may not be a good one any longer plus that o-ring is older than hell I know I'm making shadows badly Attach the line to it. Okay, it just touches the wire, not the hose. We can move the hose. I mean, we can move the wire. That's easy. Now the throttle linkage does not rub anything. As you should be. Cut the camera. Alrighty, so now we're just gonna make big boys air seat work again. Probably can't see it with me working in here, but doing the best I can. Alrighty. 